What is up, suppers? It is Dives, Mr. Crockpot on Twitter. First and foremost, I want to thank all of our new YouTube subscribers uh, over the last couple of weeks. Uh, we're getting close to 1,000 subs. We love you guys. Uh, make sure to check out um, everything video games and pop culture over at thepaintedlines.com. Uh, the Suit Up podcast can be found on iTunes and Spotify. Uh, make sure to give us a five-star rating and subscribe. Uh, next up, we are giving a giveaway. Uh, this right here, this Star Wars Darth Vader bad boy um, is a 168-piece um, Lego set. Um, if you want it, it's free. All you got to do is follow us on Twitter at SuitUpTPL. Like, retweet, uh, write in a diehard Star Wars fan. And that's all you gotta do. Uh, we'll we'll give out the giveaway, announce the giveaway probably next weekend sometime. Um, that tweet is pinned on our suit up Twitter page. Um, a random winner will be selected. Lastly, um, if you have or haven't seen the Joker film uh, or love TV um, or looking for some awesome TV reviews uh, by our co-host Dave and other contributors, make sure to check out the culture section of the Painted Lines. All of those can be found at thepaintedlines.com. Okay, let's get down to business. We are just a few weeks away from Halloween, and we have a new show on the TPL YouTube channel. If you love horror video games, then boy, do we have something for you. Um, our guest Shane is going to give us an explanation of his brand new horror video game show, and we are going to give our top five horror video games of all time. What do you say, Shane? You ready to suit up, man? I'm, I'm ready, man. I've been ready. Let's suit up. Sorry for the people. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Uh, let's start off by introducing our guest today. He is Shane Sullivan. You can follow Shane on Twitter at Gus Chiggins and on Twitch. Uh, at Gus underscore TPL. Shane is one of our key cogs of our A Pod Has No Name podcast and has been reviewing the books in, uh, of his dark materials and getting us ready for that awesome show on HBO coming up. Um, if you love fantasy content like Game of Thrones, make sure to check out him on Twitter, iTunes, and Spotify. That is at A Pod Has No Name. How you doing, Shane? I'm good, man. Appreciate the introduction. <laughs> no problem, man. So uh, tell us what you got going on with A Pot Is No Name. Yeah, so right now we're finishing up the um, the third book of the His Dark Materials trilogy, and it's going to line up really perfectly because we'll probably finish the book here probably by the end of the month, and then the HBO show is going to kick off on November 4th. So we really lined it up. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm not going to say it was an accident because it wasn't. Right, we had this planned, and now we got the show coming up in the beginning of uh, beginning of November, and we're really excited for that. Um, you know, James McAvoy is in it, yes. um, Lynn Manuel Miranda. It looks like it has a lot of star power, and you know, I think it's going to kick ass. So I'm excited to uh, you know wrap up the series here and like really know what we have in store for us for this HBO show, and you know, we'll pot along you know weekly episodes with that as well. Um, so you know, I'm really excited for that. It looks really good, man. I'm ex I'm excited to see that show. Um, yeah. I'm also excited to like get your take on the books versus the show. So that'll be really yeah, good. There will be a lot of content to push out once the show starts. Um, so certainly, you know, give a pod has no name a follow. Um, you know, follow along with us. We'll definitely. Uh, I think the show is going to is going to attract a lot of fans that might then want to get into the book series after you know they see the show because I think that's what happened with Game of Thrones personally. Love it, love it. Uh, so new thing is happening with our YouTube channel. We are evolving like Pokemon into video games. Uh, Shane is leading the way with that with his TPL gaming. Uh, Shane, what can you tell us about your TPL gaming show on YouTube channel? Yeah, so I had the idea, you know, with the month of October and Halloween coming up, I, I'm a big fan of, of horror video games. I got really into the genre like a year or two ago. Um, and I just thought it would be a really fun idea to play through the horror video games for the month of October. And, you know, what better way to do it than, you know, with YouTube and Twitch. Um, and I figured, you know, it's a genre, like a lot of the things you, I feel like you watch on YouTube and Twitch, you know, it's the Battle Royale games. So I figured this was like a nice, you know, bit of a different spin on it. Um, because I think there's a lot of like really under-reclaimed and under-appreciated games within the genre. Um, 
and I'm just a big fan, man. So I'm, I'm happy to just play along with them through the month of October. And, you know, once the month is over, there's, you know, a ton of other things, you know, we can do with it too, you know, all sorts of, uh, you know, games and different segments we can play. Um, so I'm excited to like just broaden that eventually, you know, get some other TPL guys in there, get some like multiplayer games going with the guys. Um, and I think it can cross over with other things as well. Right. So I think it'll be really fun. Uh, I'm just waiting for that second to have the, a Super Nintendo, uh, Super Mario World. <laughs> stream. Oh yeah, of I'm course, <laughs> of course. <laughs> so you know, the first game we're doing with the with the playthrough is going to be. It's a game called Remother Tormented Fathers. Um, I just found the game, you know, searching through the Xbox Store. It had a lot of good reviews, um, you know. So I just took, you know, I kind of went into it not knowing anything about it so we did two episodes so far i want to get another episode in this week and then this saturday we're going to do like a couple hour stream and then put that on youtube so i'm hoping to get close to beating it by the end of the weekend um but it's been a lot of fun man it's like you're in like a big haunted house there's a, a killer um and there's like a mystery to unravel through it all so it's like it has a very um like classic horror feel cool um, so I'll make sure to put those links to the first two parts of that series on this uh, YouTube uh, feed. All right, so what is it about horror games that you love so much? Yeah, so I don't know. Me personally, I just think um, like most horror games, like other than the survival aspect, there's usually like some task you have to complete or some mystery that you have to solve or unravel. And I just love the way that they make your mind work. I feel like horror games make your head think in a way that other games don't um and i just i don't know i really like you know what i mean I, I like the exercise of it like thinking of like okay and you know i'm a big fan of games that have like a map you have to follow like all right what's the fastest way to get to this room you know what i mean and you have to plan that out and you have you know enemies you either have to fight or um or like sneak by along the way um and the, the story modes in them are always like i don't know if you ever played like any resident evil games or anything like that but the stories are always like massive man and mm -hmm. you know like movie caliber story modes that I really just fall in love with. Um, so, so, you know, I, the whole genre, I think, um, and when we do our top five, I'll give my examples of like my, my favorite ones, but um, I don't know, man, I just have a lot of fun playing with them. A lot of, a lot of fun, the way it makes your mind really think and work. And there's also like, you get there, it like makes your blood flow. It gets like the anxiety levels rising in a way that other games I don't think do. Uh -huh. uh, I also love horror video games. They're one of my favorites. Um, I obviously, if you listen to the, the last suit up podcast with Christy and I, we did a top 10 Halloween horror, uh, film in film and TV. Uh, we love horror movies, um, in this household. Um, so make sure you check that out. He is Shane on Twitter at Gus chickens and follow him on Twitch. Um, Gus underscore TPL Shane, I was going to ask you to suit up, but it looks like you already did, man. Major props to Shane for. Super I have my super suit underneath here, so whenever the time comes, I'm ready. You know what I mean? Love it, love it. Uh, let's get into our top five horror video games. It is almost Halloween, so let's do this. All right. So, how do you want to do it? Do you want to do your five, and I'll do my five, or should we go back and forth? I think we should go back and forth. Let's do All right. five. We'll start, we'll start off with five, and we'll go up to one. I love it. Yeah. All right. Go ahead, man. What's your number five? So, number five, I have honestly. In some circles, it, it could be number one. My whole, I feel like my whole one through five could get yeah. like reordered on any given day of the week, if you ask me. But number five, I'm going to have Outlast. Oh. Um, so Outlast is basically a game. It's a first person. Um, you, you play through the eyes of the character. You're a reporter. Um, and you go to this insane asylum that has like all of these accusations again for like mistreating patients. And you have like a webcam. And that's kind of like your night vision because most of the asylum is like pitch black. So you have to turn like the night vision mode on the webcam and then you can see through that way. And there's all types of, there's no, there's no fighting in the game. It's, it's, it's run or hide is basically the only thing you can do. And there's all these different documents around the asylum. You can pick up and you read about the story and you have to like put the pieces together. Um, it's really excellent. There was a sequel Outlast 2. Um, I only played that halfway through. I was actually considering doing the second one for the TPL gaming series since I never beat it all the way. Um, but it's a, it's a great game. Um, and I, I'm sure there's a lot, if you talk to a lot of people, they'll probably say it's like the best horror game ever, which I don't, I can't disagree with. Whew, I'm going to have to write that down. I've never heard of it. Um, Alex, oh man, check it out. I'm check getting it. that out, man. I, if you say that, if you say so, so I'm in, uh, my number five is dead space two. 
Um, yeah. But Dead Space 2, just such an incredible experience. Uh, the visuals, the sound design, the monster design, um, the atmosphere, I think you're going to see in my top five list, it's all about atmosphere for me. Um, so just, it's a top-notch horror game. You know, this was like such an upgrade for me over Dead Space 1. I mean, you're flying around, there's zero gravity. Um, I, I think uh, like similar games to this are like Dark Souls and Demon Souls, uh, where it has a ton of replayability. This was like one of the, like the horror games with that new game plus that I played over and over and over again. It's a survival game and you just if, see if you can do it better the next time. And that was like one of those, yeah. but like blowing up limbs of like ne necromorphs, which is never as, as much fun as it was. get old. <laughs> that get old. So good. But, but overall, like, just like you, Shane, like the feeling of like being disoriented that this film, this uh, film, this video game gave you, was like one of my favorite aspects. It had a great story, it had a great character. Like you see the main character literally ravel uh, mentally, yeah. psychologically, emotionally through this game. And that was just, it's like you said, it's hard to like make a top five list. We were talking about that beforehand. I know. But this is my number five. It's a good pick, man. It's a good pick. I, I don't have the Dead Space series on mine, but I mean, those are classic games, right? You can't go wrong with Dead Space. Um, number four, huh? I have Resident Evil 1, the very first Resident Evil. Now, I never played the original Resident Evil. They remastered it for Xbox One a few years ago, and I played the remastered version, which is like, it's like an over-the-top, like you look down on the room and you like, you control the character. Mm -hmm. um, so it's like, it has like a very old-timey, like almost like a, like a board game, like style feel to it. And like, again, you're just in a big mansion and there's zombies and there's zombie dogs and you just have to like solve the mystery and there's like all these items scattered around the house and like you might see an item in the beginning that you have no idea what to do with and then three hours later into the game you need it for something and like i just like that aspect like you have to remember everything you see retrace your steps um and it has an excellent like an excellent story on how this zombie outbreak and resident evil like originated um so that's that's an excellent uh top one for me like gameplay wise, you know, like the like we've come a long way since Resident Evil One, but the nostalgic feel that it gives, you know, you can't can't go wrong with it. If if anyone hasn't played Resident Evil, you know, check out the remastered version of Resident Evil One. It's a great time. It's a classic, man. What else can you say yeah. about Resident Evil? I actually, it's it's funny. I didn't put any Resident Evil or Silent Hill games on this top five which I'm already punching myself in the face. Yeah, Silent Hill was one I, I completely slipped my mind. Those ones are awesome too. So good, man. So good. Grew up with those games. Uh, my number four, um, I think it's one of the most underrated games of all time. I could be wrong. You're the expert. But uh, it is Dying Light. Have you ever heard of Dying Lights? Oh, like the zombie game, right? Yeah. So this Incredible. is like, this is like an parkour. Yep. It's a, like an open world playground with uh, parkouring over rooftops, jumping from building to building. Um, with zombies, um, it's real. It's a pretty scary game. It's not like terribly scary, like Dead Space or Resident Evil, um, but it's just a fun, like survival RPG horror game. Um, it's just the most fun I've had, like parkouring over buildings since like Spider Man Two on the PlayStation Two. Uh, yeah, just a ton of fun. Um, this is not a game with like a great plot or like these like memorable characters or this like awesome villain. Um, it's just a straight up beautifully open world game where you can like cut up zombies like there's hordes of zombies to be killed uh with awesome weapons that you can build and create which i love like i'm a big rpg guy i love yeah. Skyrim. i love get like finding and like uh grinding all the little crafts to make up the best weapons possible uh, um, yep. yes is that's dying life. i loved it they announced a sequel yeah i heard it's really good yeah so i'm, I'm excited for whenever that comes out we'll, we'll put that on tpl gaming for sure <laughs> For sure. Uh, uh, what's your number three, man? So number three, I have, and after this, I'm done with Resident Evil. But number three, I have Resident Evil Two. Um, <laughs> it's the best. So this is so this is where Resident Evil Two I have higher than Resident Evil One because Resident Evil Two is similar to Resident Evil One in the fact that you're in like a big police station the entire game, right? Same spiel as the first one. There's you know documents and uh, clues you can find to unravel the story. Um, and you have to do like all these objectives um, sequently to, to complete the game. 
Um, now, Resident Evil 1 and 2, you both have to beat the game twice with two different characters to, like, get the full story because you know, their, their point of view see different things. But what makes Resident Evil 2 really good is that there's a character called Mr. X who can't be killed. Unlike the zombies, he's unkillable. And he just, he hunts you the entire game. Like, you can escape him for a little bit, but he uh, he hunts you off, like, if you shoot your gun... He'll, he'll hear it and come to where you shot it at. Like he just he he stalks you the entire game, and it adds like it adds a like a different layer to it that the first one didn't have. Um, because now not only do you have to like run around and worry about the zombies as you complete these objectives, but now you got Mister X, you know, chasing you as well. So they also remastered that on the Xbox and PlayStation. Um, you know, if you never played them before, you might as well just play the remastered versions. They're they're excellent. Um, and like the, the graphics in the second one are literally incredible. Like it's a new game. It came out this year actually. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll actually be doing the. There's DLC for it that I've never played before. So I'll, I'll be doing that for TPL gaming maybe next week once we get through Remothered. Love it, love it. Um, just just an absolute classic game. Um, yeah. Number three. I'm probably gonna get flamed for this because I don't know if it's an action. I don't know if it's a horror game, but I'm putting it on here. Is it a horror game? Eh, maybe, maybe not. Uh, it is Dark Souls. Um, I think it counts. Does it? <laughs> I think it does count because the anxiety factor is there that is in a horror game. You know yeah. what I mean? Yes. Uh, not many games like Dark Souls make you feel beaten and terrified more so than Dark Souls. Um, having to lure out like each each individual enemy and like avoid getting swarmed by these guys. Um, dude, it's time consuming. It's, it's so much anxiety to it. Um, yeah. the feeling of losing all of the souls that took you, you know, hours and hours to collect that, you know, one wrong move, one yeah. wrong move, you could, it's over. And it's just, uh, the game's difficulty is kind of what made it famous. Um, it's punishing, it's sadistic. That's a hard game to me. Um, yeah. so well, you said, you mentioned atmosphere earlier. My big three, my big three aspects are atmosphere, strategy, and like the anxiety inducing feeling that it gives you. And I mean, that checks off, yeah. that checks off all three. Yeah. Yeah. The atmosphere with dark souls and the majority of all of its sequels are just, you know, top notch. Uh, yeah. It's that, that feeling of like isolation, you know, in, in these games that are just the best, like it taking you to each different like uh, environment and level. And you literally, um, this, these are the games, dark souls are the, the games that you play without, um, a walkthrough without a guide because yeah. surprise around every single corner like Resident Evil when you have that creepy door opening scene uh, it's, yeah. like, it's so, so much anxiety and I just any any moment there could be a boss or there could be like so, some guy yeah. is way higher level than you are and you're you're fucked <laughs> yeah, yeah basically basically Dark Souls now I definitely think that that qualifies alright it's one of my favorite games of all time uh, not just horror games but RPGs uh, I had to put it on this, this list. Whatever, what, if you guys flame me or not, it's it's so good. <laughs> yeah, it's like a marriage between RPG and horror, right? So it's a, it's actually like a few different genres, I think, intertwined. Yep, yep. Um, number two. Yeah, so number two, let me ask you, are you an alien, like the movie Alien, the franchise Alien fan? Of course, man. <laughs> so you're a big fan. Okay, so. I know where this is going. <laughs> so you know in Alien 2 when she wakes up? from like cryo sleep and she like, she finds out like her daughter is like dead and all like lived her life and died. Yeah. So, so there's a game called alien isolation oh. and it takes place when her daughter is like a young adult. And I mean the story aspect to it, like I, I feel like it should be considered Canon. I'm not officially sure if it is, but I, in my head it is. Um, you get like a distress signal where like some space station found her ship's black box. And like they have the recordings of what happened in Alien One, and you're her daughter, and you go to the ship, and lo and behold, on the space station, there's an alien. Mm -hmm. And the whole game, you have a uh, you have a motion tracker that they have in Alien Two, um, and you're just on this spaceship, basically alone, with the alien on the ship with you, and you have to do all these different objects, and it's first person, like through through her daughter's eyes. Um, and you have to, there's androids on it, on the ship. You have to hide from them, do all these objectives um, while the alien is on the ship. So, like, not only is the gameplay excellent because, like Alien 1, 
the alien is unkillable. Like, you can get a gun, you can get a flamethrower, you can throw anything you want at this thing. You're not going to kill the alien. Um, <laughs> so you basically, it's like, if, and the alien is different than, like, zombies in Resident Evil, because if the alien hears you or sees you, it's going to kill you. Like, if there's no running, right? <laughs> you can't run away from it. So you have to be, like, very sneaky. It's like a, um, it's like a glorified game of hide-and-seek on a big space station. Um, and I'm just, I'm a huge Alien fan in general. I love Prometheus. I love the Alien Covenant. Um, so, I don't know, just being able to, like, there's not many, I think, I can only think of Alien Colonial Marines, which was a pretty trash game. Yeah. Um, like, the fact that there's a good game in the Alien universe is just, that's like my sandbox. I love it. Um, there's not many. <laughs> no, no, there's well, not many. Tried, so. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, it's really, really good, man. Uh, I guess they say like in in video games, no one can hear you scream. Ah. Yeah, yeah, pretty yeah. much. Right? <laughs> There's some aspects of it where like you put on a spacesuit and like you're in space and like you see the alien crawling on the ship and it's like, oh my god, okay. um, talk about anxiety inducing an atmosphere. You can hear it like in the vents as you walk around the ship. It's I, if you ever played a game, you have to blast the volume because the alien will hear you before you hear it. <laughs> oh, cool. Uh, I have. I have not played that game. That that game and like System Shock Two are like the top two games that I've never played, and it, it kills me because I've heard so many good things about it. Yeah, it's incredible. It's incredible. Uh, my number two. I'm going way back. Uh, one of the best and most important games of all time, and especially my childhood, uh, was 1993 Doom. You played Doom. Doom. Right? <laughs> no, I never played the original one. Okay. Never played the original one. Dude, I was I was nine years old when this came came out, and it just owned my life. And I don't know what else to say. This was like Mortal Kombat level type of game. Yeah. Um, it was incredibly innovative for its time with the graphics, the, the all the different types of weapons, the mods, the textures, the visuals. Um, it was just a very innovative game for the time. And like playing this game by myself in my bedroom when I was like nine years old, dude. Uh, this is one also one of those like anytime you open the door um, or like go yeah. around the corner, there could be a horde of of, of yeah. enemies around the corner. And it's just it's just an all time classic. Like uh, and then the music, the music is nothing but like electric uh, guitar riffs and like yeah. rock and roll music. It's, like, like, it's so good, man. It's so good. Uh, what else is there to say about Doom, man? It, it's just a classic. Yeah. Did you ever touch the the new remastered one? Uh, I've not, so I I need I'm to. Sure I, that would be good. I sure that would be a nostalgic experience for you. <laughs> yeah, I would love to. I would love to. Uh, are we going into number one now? All right, you ready? I'm ready, man. What's your number one? All right, number one horror video game of all time, and I I I will argue with this. Yeah, I said the other ones I could argue, but like I think this one is the number one. Um, it's got to be Amnesia. Um, Amnesia: Dark Descent. That's the very first one. Okay. Now. Amnesia is a game you're, you just you wake up in a bed in a giant castle and you have no recollection of who you are you and there's like these creepy, <laughs> these creepy monsters walking around and like the whole area is pitch black and you have a lantern it's supposed to be in like the 1800s um so you have to like find oil to put in your lantern to light up the way um and you basically same thing with like outlast and resident evil you know, like there's these little like clues and parchments you can find that like tell you more about your identity and like what happened inside this castle. Um, and as the story unravels, it's like, I think the story is excellent. Um, the gameplay, I like when I say atmosphere is a huge part for video games, the atmosphere in this game, I think is unmatched in any other video game, like a creepy dark 1800s castle. All you have is a lantern to light the way with limited oil to light it. Right. Um, like the whole time you're just looking at the corner of your screen like do i have enough oil to get through this hallway you know what i mean um it's awesome man if, and and amnesia is a game that was only on pc for a long time uh which killed me because i you know i'm saving up for a, a computer now that i can you know get some get some gaming on um but i've been a, a console gamer my whole life so this a couple years ago they they ported it to to console um, and that was like the best day of my life. I had to, I've I've watched people play the game on YouTube, um, and then when it came out on console, so I bought it immediately and played it through myself. Um, now I've never done this yet, but they just came out with the hard mode, which is basically 
the oil you have to find to light your lantern, there's fewer of those. Mm -hmm. And they actually, you can only save by using the oil. So not only, so you have to choose, like, do I want light or do I want to save? Um, it adds a little bit of an extra layer and challenge to it. So I, I'll have to dive, dive into that in the future. But Amnesia, number one horror game of all time. Love it. I'm writing that down, another one that I need to check out. I've never heard of it. Uh, yeah, it's, it's awesome. it was only on PC for a while. I feel like a lot of console gamers, you know, they haven't ever been exposed to it. Um, but now that they ported it on there, it is excellent, man. And the company that makes it, let me just Google them real quick because they've made a couple of other really great games. Um, give me one second here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, it sounds awesome. Frictional games with an FR. Frictional. They've made another really good game. They have is Soma, which is just like it. But like, I don't know. Just look up frictional games and the horror games that they have. They are, I think, the best in the industry um, at the genre. They are incredible. Awesome. Uh, piggybacking off of your atmospheric comment, uh, I love atmosphere in video games. Uh, just like Doom, just like um, all these Dark Souls. Uh, I also have a number one horror game, and I'll argue it. Um, so I am Andrew Ryan, and I'm here to ask you a question, Shane. Uh, without question, the best horror game of all time is Bioshock. Um, That's a good pick. That's a good pick. <laughs> I mean, up until that game, um, no game, in my opinion, uh, had the atmosphere, the lighting, the, um, the narrative, the dark humor, the, just the, the overall tension, like Bioshock for me, man. Um, it's just, oh man, dude, the underwater city of rapture, the imagination along with the all, ultra great film, uh, v, uh, video game score. It's just one of my all time favorite video game experiences. Uh, the character development is top notch. It has a twist, um, yep. it's challenging. It has some RPG elements. Um, and I, I think that's that's probably why you love it so much. And I think same here because I'm a big RPG fan. That like intermixing of genres there yeah. is, is, you know, like I said earlier about you know it's it's a sandbox for me at that point. Yeah, man. Um, it has some action elements where like taking down a big daddy always makes you feel badass. Um, yeah. It also has one of my favorite all time levels. If I'm gonna go, go even more into a deep dive into video games, one of my favorite video game levels of all time was. In this game, it was Cohen's Cohen's um, masterpiece uh, in Fort Frolic. When you're playing this game, and this guy's putting on a theatrical like show for you, and he's twisted. It's psychological. Um, it's it's deep, and the, the film score just has this like haunting piano score in the background, and it's just just so epic, man. Um, so it's funny. It's funny you said that because there's a game I played last year that reminded me so much of Bioshock, but in a, in a different setting. Have you ever played Prey? I've heard of it. I've never played it. So the makers of it's um, Bethesda, the makers of like Skyrim and Fallout. Yeah. It's called Prey, and it, it the way I look at it is it's it's Bioshock on a space in a big space station oh. instead of an underwater city. It's a space city. Um, and it's like, you know, you're on this whole space station, certain doors are locked, you're only granted access to certain areas in the beginning, you have to find like keys, weapons to like unlock the other areas. And I don't know, it's just, if you loved Bioshock, you would definitely love Prey too. Right, sounds awesome. <laughs> <laughs> You've given me like at least three games here that I'm gonna have to like uh, somehow find the time between a, a newborn <laughs> and my job. Well, that's why YouTube's a great place, man. And yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll, put, yeah. we'll put that content out there ourselves right on man uh so make sure to follow shane on twitter at gus chickens and his twitch page gus underscore tpl uh make sure you retweet and like and add a star wars fan to get this star wars darth vader lego set um any last comments before we wrap this up man yeah man uh you know just i'm happy to do the tpl gaming it's one of my hobbies anyway so i'm happy to do it um, you know, in a way that contributes towards the painted lines and, you know, gets content out there. Um, I hope all the viewers like it as well. Um, if there's anything that you want to see played, any horror games that we haven't spoken about that you think we would like, or, uh, you know, is a fun time to just watch people get scared playing, you know, I volunteer as tribute. Comment below and I'll, I'll give it a shot. <laughs> Love it. Uh, for Shane, for myself, uh, make sure you follow everything Disney superheroes video games uh, at Suit Up TPL. Make sure you check out A Pod Has No Name on Twitter. Uh, they produce awesome content uh, of book reviews, chapter reviews of 
everything his dark materials to get you ready for the awesome show. It looks looks like it's going to be awesome. One of the biggest shows of the year. Uh, for Shane, for myself, thanks for watching, guys. Stay awesome. Thank you.